St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, at least, that uh, tune of the Star Wars theme is quite a bit of comfort. Um, it reminds me of those good days, sitting in my living room, watching that movie over and over and over again, especially this time of year. But somehow I don't think that's quite what the prophet Isaiah meant when he wrote those words speaking on behalf of God, comfort Oh, comfort my people, says your God. We live today in a 24-7 contact society. Our phones ring and buzz. They intone at all hours of the day and the night with alerts, announcements, and reminders about the world that is around us. It might be a friend checking in at a favorite restaurant might be a family member who is calling with news about a new job or a child born or worse, a car wreck or admission to the hospital. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem. Make it very clear that she has served her sentence that her sin is taken care of, that it is forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough, and now it's over and done with. The people to whom Isaiah speaks have been through a terrible ordeal. Israel has fallen to Assyria. Assyria has fallen to Babylon. Jerusalem is destroyed. And the Israelites find themselves once again without a home. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. In our 24-7 contact society, we don't have to wait for the newspaper to arrive in the morning or the 5 o'clock news to come on the TV to know what is happening across the United States or, for that matter, around the world. We knew almost immediately about the attacks on 9-11 on the World Trade Center in New York. We knew almost immediately about the November attacks in Paris. We knew almost immediately about the bombing in Boston at the site of the Boston Marathon. We knew almost immediately again this week about shootings in San Bernardino, California. We knew almost immediately, in fact, as I was coming in for worship last night, I looked down at my phone and found out about another hostage situation just north of us in Nina, Wisconsin. Not because I read it in the newspaper, not because I saw it on TV, but because we are tethered to the world around us and connected. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. And what leads the news in these situations where we get these little alerts on our phones or we or we turn the TV on and we see that scrolling across the bottom of the TV, is not always the stuff we want to know about, but it's the statistics around the horrific events of which we are experiencing. Statistics and images of the injured and the dead. Statistics and images of a world that has turned its back on love. Love for our neighbor. Love for family. Love for God. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth, a highway fit for our God. Fill in the valleys. 
level off the hills, smooth out the ruts, clear out the rocks, then God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it, just as God has said. The problem is the statistics and the images of these horrific events are not the only images of our world. In fact, they are a minority of the images that occupy our days. A voice says, shout. And I said, what shall I shout? These people are nothing but grass. Their love, fragile as wildflowers, The grass withers, the wildflowers fade. If God so much as puffs on them, aren't these people just so much grass? True, the grass withers and the wildflowers fade. But our God's word stands firm and forever. As God's people, we are called to tell a different story. A story not of tragedy and sadness, but a story of hope and of promise. Comfort. Comfort my people, says our God. The story is told of a Jewish man named Yankel who once owned a bakery, bakery in the Crown Heights neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York. He survived the concentration camps and once had told the story. You know why it is that I'm alive today? I was just a kid, a teenager at the time, and we were on the train, a boxcar, being taken to Auschwitz. Night came and it was freezing, deathly cold in that boxcar. The Germans would leave the cars on the side of the tracks overnight, sometimes for days on end with no food, certainly no blankets. Sitting next to me was an older Jew, a beloved elderly Jew. I knew him from my hometown. I recognized him, but I'd never seen him quite like this. He was shivering from head to toe. He looked terrible. So I wrapped my arms around him. I began rubbing him to warm him up. I rubbed his arms, his legs, his face, his neck. I begged him to hang on. All night long, I kept the man warm this way. I was tired. I was was freezing cold myself. My fingers were numb, but I didn't stop rubbing the heat onto this man's body. Hours and hours went by this way. Finally, night passed. Morning came and the sun began to shine. There was some warmth in the cabin. I looked around the car to see some of the other Jews in the car. To my horror, all I could see were frozen bodies. All I could hear was deathly silence. Nobody else in that cabin made it through the night. They died from the frost. Only two people survived. The old man and me. The old man survived because somebody kept him warm. I survived because I was warming someone else. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says our God. Climb a high mountain, Zion. You're the preacher of the good news. Raise your voice. Make it good and loud, Jerusalem. You're the preacher of the good news. Speak loud and clear. Do not be timid. Tell the cities of Judah, look, your God. Look at him. God the master comes in power, ready to go into action. Look, your God. Look at him. God the Master comes ready to go into action. This is the story that we tell as followers of Jesus, making disciples of Jesus, serving the world. 
Look, your God. Look at Him. This is the story we tell when we tell our co-workers of St. John's Lutheran Church and the many 12-step groups that meet here every day providing comfort to people who are saddled with addiction. Look, your God. This is the story we tell every Monday when we go to Hope Center to serve a meal for those who would otherwise go hungry. God, the Master, comes in power, ready to go into action. This is the story we tell when we commission our high school youth to serve on summer mission trips. Comfort. Comfort my people, says our God. This is the story we tell when our faithful friends team picks up the phone to call those who are in need, providing them with a meal, a ride to an appointment, or just a pick-me-up phone call in the middle of a dreary day. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says our God. This is the story we tell when women gather quietly in the basement of this church making quilts or in the conference room knitting prayer shawls, praying over their work and the people who will receive these gifts. God the Master comes in power ready to go into action. This is the story we tell when our families gather in their homes each evening sharing their day, reading scripture, talking about what God is doing in their lives, praying for each other and blessing one another at the end of their day. Look, your God. This is the story we tell when we gather in worship, to be in community with one another, to pray with and for one another, to experience Christ coming to us in the meal and in God's word, when the world tells us there are a thousand other places that we could be at this very time. Comfort. Comfort my people, says our God. This is the story we tell by partnering with churches around the world. In Tanzania, El Salvador, in the abandoned neighborhoods of Milwaukee. To remind ourselves and others that God is alive and God is well and all is well in the world. That this hope that God coming into the world as a tiny child, this hope remains despite the narrative that the world tries to give us. Look, your God. Look at him. This is the story that we tell as followers of Jesus making disciples of Jesus, serving the world for Jesus. Or, maybe this is all just a dream. Maybe it's just a story that was created for people hundreds or thousands of years ago who were not nearly as enlightened as we are. A story meant to give hope in a world so vastly different from ours that these words now ring empty in halls where they were once alive with the Holy Spirit. Comfort. Comfort my people, says God. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth. A highway fit for our God.